So one day while working, I saw this link pop up. Huge shout out to my buddy Steady Chicken for posting it. And I saw that it was Kmart. I saw that it had Mini in the name. And then that it was only 25 bucks. So I knew I had to get it. Let's hit up Kmart. I know Kmart in the US is like a dying breed, I don't know the full story so let me know what's up but in Australia, which by the way are different companies just the same name, it's for sure one of the big variety department stores with over 200 in the country. However over the last two years they've shifted to stocking super cheap products under the Anko brand which has extended to some electronic stuff. A while back I did check out a full size mechanical keyboard from them and yeah it was a little sussy but now look at this, fully stacked shelves, they've gone, they've gone really hard with the, the gaming stuff, RGB for days here. Uh, but what we're interested in is this stuff. It was absolutely stacked at the time, I think it was the day after I saw the link, but look at that price, $25, and that's Australian dollars, so more like 19 USD-ish, which definitely puts it right down there. And more importantly, it's, it's right here on the shelves, ready to go. Super simple packaging here, we get the keyboard and a user manual. First impressions, the thing is light, coming in at just over 400 grams and that's with the cable as it's non-detachable. So as you can imagine, it's because it has an all plastic construction, meaning that the plate is also plastic where, I don't know, 95% of pre-built mechs will have some sort of metal plate. To be clear though, plastic isn't bad, it's actually often desirable in custom mechs, but it for sure makes it super light and flexible. Aesthetically though, it's not bad at all because it's a 60%. You can't really go wrong. It has very minimal bezels which are flush to the plate, giving us a floating key design with the key switches exposed along with that lighting. The side profile is simple with probably a five or six degree incline. It does have that non-detachable cable, which actually caught me off guard when I had to use it. I'm just so used to being able to grab one of my cables and plug a keyboard in. And the bottom, bunch of rubber feet and a sticker in the middle, and that's it. The keycaps are pretty good, about 1.1mm thick and they're double shot so the legends are a different piece of plastic and won't fade away. It's that typical backlit cap font, um, not the best but it is what it is for that RGB lighting. And I say RGB lighting but it's just fixed multicolour with some effects so for example the Q key will always stay yellow. You'll also notice that there's a bunch of stuff printed on some keys because as mentioned before, this is a 60% keyboard which the name Mini implies. A 60% keyboard is approximately 60% the size of a normal full size keyboard. Um, this one having 61 keys, having just the main cluster of the keyboard. Therefore to access all the other stuff, some keys have additional functionality which is accessed by the function or FN key. So for example, the F1 key is accessed by holding FN and 1 together. And this is how it is with all compact keyboards. However, this does not have any further programmability and customizability. So not for everyone, but you know, don't rip it till you try it. One thing that gets me here is that for some reason it has an ISO enter key. First of all, we, we don't really use that in Australia, but 
Secondly, it doesn't have an actual ISO layout. Everything else is standard ANSI, so that's a bit odd. Another thing that isn't the greatest is that it has two key rollover. So what that means is that the keyboard can guarantee two simultaneous key presses. This is only present for a few combinations. It tops out at seven. So for the most part, you'll be fine like WASD and spacebar all work together. But the one that got me was Windows Shift S um, for screenshot stuff, which was kind of annoying. Under the keycaps, we have Zinder blue clicky key switches, and this is the only switch it comes with, so let's listen to this bad boy. So yeah, I'm sure you could hear that for yourself. Honestly, it's not that bad for what it is. It's pretty standard for a really cheap mech. A lot of them tend to go with clicky switches. In this case, we have Zinna Blues. They feel like a typical click jacket blue, like Cherry MX Blues. And in this case, they're, they're loud, which fortunately kind of masks the super rattly stabilizers, but nothing is hiding this. Funnily enough though, to help cut costs, I guess, only the space bar and the right shift have stabilizers. The backspace, ISO enter, and left shift do have spots for some, but no wires. So there, there is some instability and wobble. You feel a bit on the 2.25 left shift, but otherwise it's fine to be honest. Plus, it means no rattle. It's quite a pingy board as well. Um, using a decimal or two definitely helps a lot with that, but the thing is, if you're getting this, it's probably your first mech, and as we all know, clicky switches, they're, they're kind of mind-blowing at first because they're the furthest away from a normal computer or laptop keyboard, and that's the thing, it's still a mechanical keyboard, and that's the experience it provides, and is why I can totally get behind it for only 25 Australian bucks. Alright, let's crack it open, there's a few Phillips head screws under some keycaps, and it just comes apart pretty easily. Here's the bottom plastic piece, super basic as you would expect, plastic standoffs but nothing wrong with it really. The more non-standard stuff is with the actual keyboard. We can see that stabilizer situation again, where only the spacebar and right shift have wires. And again, that plastic plate rather than metal, it does come down the side, so it makes it a little sturdier, but this is why this thing is so light. Turning it over to the PCB, another minor cost cut, the USB cable is just soldered on and secured with hot glue. Um, the solder joints for the switches and LEDs are all cool. The Zinder switches are just 3-pin rather than 5 for those who care, and the SMD LEDs as we saw before, they aren't actual RGB multicolored ones but are singular color. And that's the Anko Mini Mechanical Gaming Keyboard from Kmart here in Australia. 
25 bucks and in a department store. Some of you guys that have been in the scene for a while, I don't think we really imagined this like five or six years ago. It's not an amazing keyboard by any means, but it's a mechanical keyboard. I still remember buying my first Ducky Shine 3 TKL with Cherry MX Blues all those years ago. Absolutely loved it, and honestly, I think this packs that same kind of initial punch that brings you into the world of mechanical keyboards. For the next video on this keyboard, inspired by my buddy Timmy, I'm gonna try and do a bunch of mods to it, but only using Kmart items somehow, which should be fun, so stay tuned for that. Big shout out to Dress and Mr. Galilee for assisting. Have a good one, and bless. Mm -hmm.